you must have noticed that the topic for this video is PCV and hematocrit. Are they the synonyms? Uh, if no, then what's the difference between PCV and hematocrit? We will try to define the PCV. We will uh, define hematocrit. We will try to understand uh, what is the importance of this uh, particular investigation, how this investigation is performed and finally the most important. What is the difference between PCV and the true body hematocrit? Let's begin. Uh, PCV means packed cell volume. Consider a unit quantity of blood. It could be 1 ml, 10 ml, 100 ml. We are looking at a whole blood. We will separate the cells and plasma. You know that the whole blood is made up of the cells and the plasma. We will try to separate them and then measure their relative percentages. When you measure the volume of all the packed cells separated from the plasma, that volume is called as the packed cell volume. So, PCV or packed cell volume is the volume of the packed cells which have been separated from the plasma in a unit quantity of whole blood. So, remember it could be 1 ml, 10 ml, 100 ml, it could be anything or 5 liters of blood as in the body. Okay, that is PCV. How do we perform it? It is performed in the Wintrobes tube, Wintrobes uh, method and the tube used is Wintrobes tube. Uh, now, in the Wintrobes tube, we will collect a sample of whole blood and then uh, it is placed in a centrifuge, the tube is placed in a centrifuge. And the centrifuge is uh, given the orders of 3000 revolutions per minute and this force is created for 30 minutes. With this centrifugal force, the RBCs or let us say all the cells in that blood would be packed towards the bottom end of the tube they have been separated from the plasma. So, on the upper uh, end of the tube, you can see the plasma separated and cells separated from the plasma and packed near the bottom end. This is the procedure. Uh, you can see the layers generally when you uh, observe the PCV tube or uh, Wintrobes tube. At the bottom end or near the lower end, all the cells are packed together, we are calling it as packed cell volume and mostly it is of the RBCs. Just above that, you can see a buffy coat layer which is of the packed WBCs. Do we take that also into account because we are calling it packed cell volume, we are not calling it packed red cell volume. But look at the numbers, RBC numbers are in uh, millions and WBC numbers are uh, in thousands per cubic millimeter of blood. So, minuscule WBC number compared to the RBC number and therefore, when we talk about the PCV, the packed cell volume, it is the volume of all the packed red cells considered for this uh, packed cell volume PCV. The w, some people also uh, include that buffy coat layer into this packed cell volume because after all these are also cells of the blood. But nevertheless, uh, it does not make much of a difference. All right. So, cells separated from the plasma, experiment done. This is the packed cell volume. Now, you uh, measure the packed cell volume. Normal value is about uh, 38 to 45 percent. Let us ignore the gender uh, difference or let us ignore the range. For the sake of understanding, we will take a value 45 percent. It means what? It means in a unit quantity of blood, 45 percent volume will be of cells and 55 percent will be the volume of plasma. Okay. And when we say cells, uh, we mean generally we mean the RBCs. All RBCs in that blood packed together will constitute that much volume. That is the PCV, 45 percent. So, if we have collected 1 ml blood sample, then 0.45 ml will be the volume of all the cells, 
and 0.55 ml will be the volume of the plasma. If we have collected 100 ml blood sample, 100 ml blood, then 45 ml will be volume of all the cells packed together and 55 ml will be the volume of the plasma. That's the concept of packed cell volume. Volume of all the packed cells, volume of all the cells in the blood packed together. All right. Uh, that's the procedure and that's, uh, that's how you take the reading. Now the next point, what is the importance of this particular uh, blood index? Well, uh, by itself, it serves a limited purpose. I mean, let's talk in absolute terms. If there is anemia, anemia, reduced RBC count and therefore the packed cell volume also will become less because there are less number of cells RBCs in the blood and therefore when you collect the sample, uh, you will get this volume uh, relatively less and that is uh, a possibility in the anemia. On the other hand, on the other extreme, polycythemia, increased RBC number, 7 millions, 8 millions per cubic millimeter. In that case, uh, when the RBCs are packed together, their volume in a unit sample of blood, their volume will be higher than normal, more than 45 percent, maybe 50 percent and in some cases it goes as high as 65 and 70 percent also. But remember, this is relative volume. When we talk of this volume of cells and plasma, this is relative to each other. Because if in polycythemia, the packed cell volume becomes 70 percent, that means plasma volume will be only 30 percent. So, this is a relative proportion of cells to plasma and that brings me to the next point. For example, consider a condition of dehydration. Dehydration because of the GI fluid loss, diarrhea, vomiting. Now, this has got nothing to do with RBC volume as such, I mean packed cell volume. But what is uh, observed is that in dehydration conditions, there is loss of extracellular fluid from the body. Plasma is the component of the extracellular fluid. So, plasma volume will be diminished, decreased. And if plasma volume becomes relatively less, then packed cell volume will be relatively more. So, this will be a relatively higher packed cell volume because plasma volume has decreased because plasma has been lost or ECF volume has been lost out of the body. So, this is in relative terms when we talk of percentage. Packed cell volume 45 percent, remaining 55 percent is plasma volume. That is the packed cell volume, volume of all the RBCs packed together, all right. That is uh, the PCV. Now coming to the uh, real issue at hands, the real topic for today's discussion. What is hematocrit and what is true body hematocrit? Okay. Now hematocrit is used, this term is used interchangeably with the packed cell volume. That is okay, you can use the term hematocrit. But in real sense, hematocrit is the uh, volume of all the cells or all the red cells in the body. Confused? Okay, listen to this part. Packed cell volume was uh, in a given sample, in a given unit quantity of blood, 1 ml, 10 ml or whatever. That is where we called it packed cell volume. But in the body, uh, we have 5 liters blood volume. And in that 5 liters blood volume, how much is the total volume of all the red cells in that entire uh, body's blood? That volume can be called as hematocrit. So, do you understand? One is for the blood sample, uh, 1 ml quantity, 5 ml, 10 ml, something like that. That is PCV. And hematocrit is used in the real sense. This term is used in the real sense for the entire body's uh, volume of all the packed cells, all the cells, if they were to be packed together, what will be the volume of those cells uh, together? That's hematocrit. So, uh, what's the difference then? 
we are collecting the same blood from the body and we are measuring the packed cell volume. Does it matter then? It would be synonymous. No. There are technical differences between packed cell volume and hematocrit. That is where we are now leading to. That's the main point. The true body hematocrit and listen to this statement uh, very carefully because that is where the technicalities come into the picture. The true body hematocrit in true sense, the true body hematocrit is equal to 0.89 of the observed value, observed PCV value. observed PCV value. So, when we obtain a value of PCV from the blood sample, okay, uh, we cannot take that value entirely as the correct hematocrit. We have to take a corrected value. Okay, uh, We have to correct that value. How much correction? Okay. If this was the observed PCV value, then we take only 89% of that observed PCV value to be the real body hematocrit or to, true body hematocrit, which means whatever value we are getting in that 1 ml blood sample or 10 ml blood sample, uh, actual body hematocrit, actual volume of RBCs in the, in the body is less uh, by 11 percent and we only take 89 percent of the observed PCV value. Now the question remains is why is that? Let us try to answer this question. First point is that when we perform this practical packed cell uh, volume, we expect it to be a very ideal uh, method that is all the cells completely separated from the plasma and got packed here uh, near the bottom end, near the lower end of the tube and plasma completely separated from it. But that does not happen. What happens really is some amount of plasma remains entrapped among those RBCs. Let us show it with the diagram here. Let us say here is a Wintrobes tube, we collected the blood sample and centrifuged it for half an hour. RBCs were separated near the bottom end and plasma on the top half. So we expect that it is an ideal separation, cells separated from the plasma, but that does not happen. Some amount of plasma will remain entrapped among these RBCs and because some amount of plasma remains entrapped in these RBCs, uh, among these RBCs, between the RBCs, therefore the reading that we get for the packed cell volume is erroneously higher, is not it? Because the plasma has got entrapped here we are getting slightly higher value. Cells were not ideally completely separated. That does not, ha that did not happen. So, we are getting a slightly higher value because of that entrapped plasma. And therefore, from the observed PCV value, we will make a deduction. We will, uh, we'll take it minus 4 percent. That is, from the observed PCV value, we will take only 96 percent or let us say, 0.96 into the observed PCV value. That is the first correction that we made because of the uh, technical error in the method. We did not, we could not separate cells from the plasma. Is that all? No, that is not all. There is further error that is possible because of the chloride shift. Look, uh, we are talking about the body hematocrit, true body hematocrit 
an average value for the entire body means what means there is arterial blood capillary blood venous blood blood in the heart chambers blood in the pulmonary circulation and the rbc volume is not the same everywhere note this point rbc volume volume of a single rbc it's not the same everywhere we collect the blood from the veins it's a venous sample all right for the measurement of the pcv and uh, do you know that in the venous blood the rbc volume volume of a single rbc is higher we call it mcv mean corpuscular volume is slightly higher and why is that it is because of the chloride shift if you remember the carbon dioxide transport there is something called as chloride shift that happens in the capillary blood chloride enters the rbcs in the tissues and then uh, this blood and those rbcs they move to the venous compartment to the venous blood chloride being osmotically active particle osmotically active ion it will pull some amount of water into these rbcs as they go to the venous side and because of that water moving in rbc size swells up and then when we are collecting the venous sample for this particular uh, method we are we are always collecting the venous blood the rbc size is slightly swollen and uh, therefore also you are getting slightly higher value of the packed cell volume because the rbcs that you have collected they are swollen rbcs their size each individual rbc volume is slightly higher than the body average elsewhere the rbc volume or volume of a single rbc is slightly lesser it's the chloride shift that has uh, caused slight swelling of the rbcs in the venous blood so because of that swelling of the rbcs in the venous blood you are getting a higher value of the packed cell volume we are observing the packed cell volume of the rbcs and rbcs are swollen in your sample slightly it's not very uh, huge difference but it is nevertheless it is there and therefore we will have to further minus uh, 4% or 5% from this to take it uh, 0.91 into the observed pcv value first uh, we deducted 4% from the observed pc this is the observed pcv value okay and what we are arriving at is the true body hematocrit in that entire 5 liter blood how much is the total uh, volume of the rbcs that is hematocrit we are calling it hematocrit so first we did minus 4 from the observed pcv value because of that entrapped plasma among the rbcs which gave us a falsely higher value of pcv then further 5% was deducted uh, because of this uh, swelling of the rbcs in the venous blood and therefore uh, we are getting a slight uh, erroneously high value or not erroneously but uh, it is higher than the body's average at other places rb each rbc does not have that much volume and in the venous blood rbc volume each single rbc has a slightly greater volume because of this chloride shift and therefore you are getting a slightly higher value because you are collecting a venous blood so we further uh, deduct about 5% from the observed pcv value and the last 2% are also deducted because of some technicality that technicality is this we are going to collect the sample by inserting a needle into a vein well this is just a diagrammatic representation so you will have to just uh, imagine that there is a vein uh, in the i mean in the cubital fossa and you insert the needle into the vein to collect the sample Uh, from sample of blood venous blood 
it is said, it is observed that when you collect that sample of blood, 1 ml, 5 ml, 10 ml, whatever it is, your needle is at such a place in the vein where it tends to collect more RBCs compared to plasma. Yes, uh, you might think that this is a very uh, outlandish kind of explanation, but it is a fact. The fact is, look, if let us say our true body hematocrit is 45 percent, means exactly 45 percent is the volume of all cells and 55 percent is the volume of plasma. That is a true uh, picture for the entire body, let us assume that. And therefore, when you collect sample from anywhere, from any blood vessel, we should get like that. 45 percent cells should be obtained and 55 percent plasma should be obtained, whether you collect 1 ml sample or 5 ml or 10 ml blood sample. But that does not happen when you collect the samples from the veins. When you collect the samples from large veins, what really happens is the needle is at such a place inside the vein, inside the vein that there are central uh, files of RBCs and you tend to pick up more RBCs compared to plasma. Look, this is a relative proportion. If you collect 1 or 2 ml, your exact proportion should be like that, 45 percent cells, 55 percent plasma because we are assuming that that is the true body hematocrit and therefore, the sample also should be ideal. But normally, the sample collection also is not ideal. When you collect the sample, you tend to pick up slightly more RBCs relative to the plasma. Do you understand? You are collecting the whole blood, but in that whole blood, when you are collecting that whole blood sample, slightly more RBCs come out compared to the plasma. Okay? They do not come into your syringe as an ideal proportion of 45 and 55. Okay, uh, And because of this technical error also, you are getting slightly more packed cell volume by your uh, method. So, further 2 percent will have to be deducted from your observed value and therefore, finally, a true body hematocrit is, now you know how much is it, true body hematocrit is 89 percent of the observed PCV value or 0 0.89 of the uh, or into observed PCV value. So, uh, that is the difference between the observed PCV value which is observed in the Wittrobe's tube versus what is the actual situation in the body that is true body hematocrit. So, it was more of a technical uh, discussion on this these two terms, but that is the technical difference between the PCV and the hematocrit.